lately? Everything you bloody touch broke, smashed. That clock my sister got us. I still don't know how I'm gonna tell her. All those little shiny things inside, all spinning and whirling. Not anymore. Jesus, you're drinking. What are you drinking for? Why do you buy the fucking stuff if you weren't gonna drink it? You bought it because it goes with a cocktail cabinet. Why do you buy the fucking cabinet then? I like the way it lights up. <sighs> you don't like the way it lights up. So did you. No, I never liked it. Yeah. I don't think I like one fucking thing in this whole fucking house. Now I don't like this leather sofa and the glass coffee table and glass shelves. Why is there so much fucking glass anyway? It's like living in a, a I don't know, a greenhouse, an ice palace. This will stay, you know. Oh, another pole of a skin in there. bed. I'll tell you what, I'll drive it to London Zoo one night. You can scale the fence and twat a bear over the head. Use one of your 500 handbags, that gold crocodile skin monstrosity that cost a fortune. You can fill it with all the jewellery we've been buying over the past two years and back. One dead polar bear. Yeah. Or you can kill it by feeding it one of your chicken nugget risottos. Or make it listen to you droning on about your hard luck fucking childhood and the way you always dreamed of, what was it again? A house for the swimming pool. Barbecues every Sunday, sitting around in the kitchen with girlfriends, nibbling cheesecake and sipping chocolate. <laughs> Every girl dreams of that. <laughs> no, they fucking don't. What? Huh? What, Steve? What? What have I fucking done? <sighs> Why are you? In the past few months, have been. My sister said I should say something. Sit you down and have a heart to heart. You, that's a laugh in itself. Home late, secretive phone calls, leaving the room and whisper, whisper. Have it out with him, she said. I should have done. And why didn't you then? Because I was scared. I, I don't want to, to lose. I'm eight months pregnant, Steve. Eight months. I know. I know. Are you seeing Janice? What? Are you fucking what Janice? You no! Know? Well, you tell her you can call me late at night. I take your phone. Jesus, don't fucking lie to me. I'm not lying. Last week, they said you were out having lunch, and you were you'd be La Forqueta, where you always go. You'd be sitting where you always sit, the table by the window. You'd be cleaning your knife and fork with the serviette. Then you straighten the tablecloth and ask the waitress for a diet cocoa with ice and lemon. You spend ages looking at the menu and then order what you always order. Veal escalop alimony with side order of peas. <laughs> Any garlic bread, sir? You think about it for a moment, frowning, then say what you always say? <coughs> no. When the meal arrives, you'll have black pepper, but only on the veal, please. You'll cut the meat into exactly the same size little bits. You won't look at the person opposite you. Not once. You won't ask how the meal is and you won't tell how yours is. When you're finished, you move your empty plate to another table immediately and gaze out of the window. You ask for the dessert menu, but then you settle for a cappuccino. Then you go to the bathroom and clean your teeth with a little airport toothbrush you keep in your breast pocket. Then you suck a peppermint so strong it makes your eyes water. Then you come back to the table and pay with your credit card and leave a 10% tip worked out to the last bloody decimal point. <laughs> then you say, no rest for the wicked and rush back to the office. On the way back you'll mention how you have eaten too much and you should go to the gym. And the person you are with will say, you look fine, just as you are, like I used to.
Although now, of course, it isn't me. Janice! I'm seeing... I'm seeing a ghost. What? A ghost, Daddy. I'm seeing a ghost. Oh God, what the fuck are you playing at now? I've seen it a few times. My sister said you came up with some bollocks. It's not bollocks. Look at me. Does it look like I'm making this up? You look exactly like my dad used to when he came back from one of his lands. Guilty! Guilty? Yes, guilty! Guilty and ashamed! A few weeks ago, on the way back from Paris, I stopped off at the supermarket. You asked me to get some bits, remember? Debbie! Go on, I'm intrigued. It was late. The supermarket was practically empty. I turned into a corner and into an aisle and... And there it was. Who? The child. What fucking child? The boy, the boy nearly knocked down. Same her, jeans, t-shirt. I wanted to say something but... Nothing. I, then the kid just walked away. And I rushed to the end of the aisle. Gone. I looked down all the other aisles. It was a ghost, Deb. And I told Janice... Ah, oh, to... Janice, here we go at last. <laughs> Janice's husband died of some blood clot thing, an aneurysm. Oh, Jesus. She told me how she used to, to feel her husband's presence in the flat where they lived. Sometimes Jan could hear her husband's fingernails scraping the side of the armchair. It's like he used to when he was watching television. That's what got Janet to spiritualism. That's what I've been talking to her about. <sighs> Deb, Jan said that sometimes uh, an accident, like a car crash, it, well, it can unlock things inside of you. And that's what's happened to me. Something's unlocked openly. This boy needs my help. Deb, tonight I couldn't sleep. I turned on the television, the, the news, another bomb somewhere, screaming. And I saw it. The boy, and it was standing there, right behind you. And I screamed, I dropped my drink. It's in the carpet. Please, don't. Oh, fuck off! I don't want this happening to me! You don't! I don't want Mum to find out. What? If Barry knows, he'll blurt it out to her. Please, <laughs> keep this to yourself. Please, don't tell Barry. Don't tell Barry. Don't tell Barry. <laughs>